Hello and welcome to another episode of Elephant English Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about decluttering. So that is minimalizing the amount of things that we have in our lives. My parents have recently sold their house and are going to move onto a narrow boat, which are very small. So they needed to declutter everything that they had. Can you tell me what is decluttering before we start? Decluttering or minimalizing is the process of reducing the amount of personal belongings in your home. Many people find this hard to do because they're emotionally attached to gifts, clothes and books. So how did you start to declutter everything that you owned? We started with one drawer. We had seen online that the best way is to empty one drawer or cupboard and put everything on the floor. Then you would be amazed how many things you had in that cupboard or drawer that you don't need. So you make three piles. Keep bin and give away. So the keep pile would be things that you want to keep for the future. The bin pile would be the the things that you want to throw into the bin and then the give away is what you would take to a charity shop or give to a friend, yeah? Yes, yes. The important thing is when you've emptied your cupboard or drawer, clean it so that it's ready to put things back in again. So you look at the items that are on the floor and one by one you decide whether to keep, bin or give away that item. And it's very difficult to choose because some things have been given to you or some things you think you need but you aren't sure. First of all, decide if the item is useful or if it's clothes, have you worn it recently? Some people say that if you haven't used that item in the last year, then you don't need it. Yes, that's true. A lot of times you might have ornaments or a a pen that someone brought you from their holiday and it's ornamental. You don't use it. So in reality, you could give that away. And I think there are some things like that special object that people have given to you that you think they're too special to use so you you end up never using them and they just stay in the cupboard for five years. So maybe it might be good as well to decide whether you will actually use that in the future or whether you should just give it away. Yes, like for example someone gave me a mug with a pig on it and I never used it because I liked it. I liked to look at it, but I never drank from it. Because it was too special. It was too special because it was a present from someone and I might have broken it. But there's no point keeping a mug that you're not actually drinking from. So you have to make this decision, should you give it away or keep it and actually use it? So everything you keep should have a a use. But what about special things that aren't useful, but they're your grandma's or something like that? Well, you have to be emotionally attached to some things. You can't be ruthless and eliminate everything from your life. But you have to be realistic. How much room will you have in your new house? for example, and you have to decide what to keep and what not to keep. One important thing is that when you have your pile of throw away or give away, is that when you've finished with that particular cupboard, put those items out of your sight. Because if not, you will be looking at them and in the end you will keep everything again. I think that happened with my teddy bears when we were trying to declutter and minimise the amount of teddy bears that I had at your house and we put them in the pile to give away but if you don't cover them and you can still see them then you feel bad about giving them away so in the end you keep them. Yes, that's right. And also you knew the name of every teddy bear so once once they had a name it was even harder to get rid of them 
people say that if you cover their eyes, then it's easier to get rid of them because it doesn't look like they are looking at you. Yes, that's, that's true. And in the end, you put them online and they were free to a good home and they have gone to a good home. So it, that's good in the end. But it was very difficult. So what is your conclusion about gifts from friends and from family that have special memories? I think that you have to see if you can remember who bought it and why they bought it. And then see if it does have special meaning to you. And what about things like photo albums? Because you don't want to throw them away and you can't really give them away because nobody would care about those photos. So what did you do with that? Well, most older people have got big photo albums with all their family's photos in. So what I was advised to do was to take the photos out of the album, scan them and put them on the computer. And in that way, all of my family have got access to the photos. Then we had a look and we had a look for duplicate photos or ones that weren't very clear and we got rid of those. Then I made a pile of photos for each of my children so they had their own. So in the end, our, our eight photo albums fitted into one small shoebox. Which are mainly photos of your wedding, aren't they? Because they're your own photos, not your children's photos. And they are very special. Yes, it's just the special photos that we kept. And the eight albums were very heavy, whereas now the shoebox is very light and small to store. And what about in the kitchen, for example? How did you declutter the things that you had in the kitchen? No, it's similar to the process that I mentioned earlier. You have to be very realistic about what you need and what you use daily. Many of us have got too many mugs and cups in the cupboard and we often use the same one every day. So you don't need that many mugs. The probability of there being 10 people in your house at the same time is very low. So you don't really need 10 mugs. And if they did come, if there were 10 people in your house, then you could use just another cup, couldn't you? Yes. And it's the same for other items in your kitchen that you accumulate. Cups and cutlery and plastic pots that don't have lids. You just have to be realistic and ruthless with what you need and what you keep and what you throw away. And what about food? How do you get rid of all the spices and all the food that you have accumulated in your cupboards in the kitchen? Well, firstly, when you empty the cupboard, have a look at the use-by or sell-by date of everything. Even if you think something is new, possibly it's two years old so even spices have a use by date or sell by date so by doing this you've eliminated half of the food anyway then think about your neighbors or family who might use these items and give them away only put fresh food back into the cupboard uh, and make a list of anything that was out of date that needs replacing i can guarantee that once you start the decluttering process you will enjoy it and you will want to do every room because when we did one room you got even excited to do the next room because you feel a sense of accomplishment that you have achieved something yes and you start looking at all of your objects thinking if you need them or not one important thing is not to throw anything away that doesn't belong to you that isn't yours Always ask the owner of the object if they want to keep it or to throw away. I think this is important with children's toys because you might not think they want to keep it, but they've got an attachment to it. So today we have talked about decluttering. If you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.